for just about any sport you can think of, choosing the right footwear is about the most important choice the athlete has to make. Sports footwear helps to protect the athlete in so many ways. From sharp objects and terrain variants, from impact and shock, from extreme conditions, and in some cases, even from faulty biomechanics. Athletic footwear can also have a profound effect on performance, and the shoe will help determine how fast an athlete can run, how well they can change direction, how high they can jump, how far they can kick a ball, and maybe, most importantly, how likely they are to get injured. This has driven the intense scientific interest in exactly what footwear can and cannot do. And it all began with the running boom of the mid-1970s. This explosion of people running was a true social phenomenon, with 20 million Americans exercising for the very first time. In fact, this boom helped shape the disciplines of sports medicine and biomechanics. With so many people exercising in really primitive running shoes, injuries were very common. So sports medicine evolved to deal with this problem. The running shoe companies recognized that their product needed to become more sophisticated and offer better protection to the athlete from injury. And so they employed biomechanists to study human movement, skeletal alignment, and the loading patterns imparted to the body during running. As a result, the running shoe quite rapidly developed from a very simple structure to something much more complex. And as more people ran, the running shoe became more sophisticated. If we look at the evolution of running footwear over the past 10 years, what we see today is barely recognisable from what was available back then. Everything has changed. And what we thought technically impossible just five years ago is on the store shelves right now. And it's not just running. Footwear for nearly every popular sport has been analysed, researched, developed, improved. But one sport has lagged behind. One sport has steadfastly refused change, refused to acknowledge there is a better way. It's the sport played by more people than any other worldwide. And it's the game that has one of the very highest injury rates. It is football. Right now, more than 200 million people play football in nearly every corner of the globe. But the shoe worn to play the world game has essentially remained unchanged from that worn 20 years ago. Despite the fact injury rates are soaring and the game itself has become faster and more complex, the football boot remains an anachronism. So where do the problems lie? Football is a game of non-stop action. Most injuries in football occur in the lower body, especially the knees and ankles. And overuse injuries are very common, especially towards the end of a long, hard season. According to the American Academy of Orthopaedic Surgeons, about half a million soccer-related injuries are treated each year. A very recent study reports that nearly 60% of players will suffer an injury at training or during the game. And this rate is slightly higher for female players. Injuries range from a simple bruise to career threatening. For example, ruptured ligaments or broken bones. Overuse injuries are responsible for almost 30% of the injuries in football and range from mild tendonitis all the way to a stress fracture taking the enjoyment out of the game, or the more serious ones can spell major downtime. So how important is footwear to the footballer? And can footwear selection positively or negatively influence player comfort, performance, and injury rate? Well, in 1996, ASICS got serious about this issue, and we studied over 2,000 elite footballers. Of these athletes, 92% attributed injury directly to their football boot at some stage in their careers. The range of injury reported varied from fairly minor, for example, blistering, to major injury requiring prolonged or repeated breaks from the game. Armed with this information, an extensive investigation of football was undertaken, looking at everything from coaching techniques, the rules of the game, the biomechanics of the sport, and the injury patterns sustained. Based on this research, one simple question was asked. What should be changed in terms of football boot design? And the answer, everything. 
even today, football boot design is primitive. In its most common guise, the boot is essentially a very simple upper attached to a hard plate of rudimentary moulded polypropylene. It's a design that hasn't changed fundamentally in more than 30 years. In fact, the biggest technical change from the old to the new football boot is seen in the cleat design of the outsole. And that's it. There is no technical focus on upper fit and function. There is no shock attenuating mechanism. And there's no midsole in the boot. Despite the fact elite players travel up to 10 kilometers per game. In addition, because there is no midsole, the player is essentially in a heel down position, a very biomechanically inefficient attitude in a running sport. A recent study has shown that the absence of a midsole in a football boot increases the pressure and force on the sole of the foot, changes joint angles at the hip, knee and ankle, and increases the activity of the hamstring muscles. This finding is particularly important because hamstring strain is one of the most common and devastating injuries in modern football. These findings are hardly surprising. Imagine running 10 kilometers in a running shoe with no midsole, no cushioning and no heel. And yet this is exactly what the elite players do every single game. No PHF, no Solite, no gel, no Trustic, no elevation. Is it any wonder that we hear reports of elite players sidelined by stress fractures of the foot and other serious injuries? So it's time to get serious about technical, protective design for football. And the ASIC's lethal Tigrior is the very first of the new breed of performance-driven football boots. Designed from the ground up on the basis of years of research and development, the lethal Tigrior is set to redefine comfort and protection in football. The Asics Lethal Tigrior has finally brought the football boot into the 21st century and takes an uncompromising technical approach to player comfort, protection, support and performance. At the heart of this stunning new achievement is the remarkable HG 10mm technology. Conceived directly from research outcomes, HG 10mm allows the footballer to perform from a biomechanically efficient position. For the first time in a football boot, a meaningful and effective midsole comprised of Solite, offering outstanding cushioning, durability and energy return. The 10mm gradient from heel to toe improves running efficiency, reduces pressure and impact force and maybe, most importantly, alters muscle firing patterns. Our research tells us this may be very important in protecting against specific muscle injury, especially the hamstring. HG 10mm is a true innovation in football and like so many ASICS innovations is destined to be the benchmark technical feature of football boots. But the features of the ASICS Lethal Tigrior go well beyond the extraordinary HG 10mm and include a painstakingly conceived multifunction cleat design in the moulded sole version, offering superior grip and acceleration. In addition, the ASICS Lethal Tigrior includes a highly specialised two-density insole. This insole is more dense under the heel and midfoot and softer under the toes, providing better flexibility and cushioning in the forefoot and greater stability under the midfoot and rear foot. The ASICS Lethal Tigrior naturally includes the very highest quality materials, including Exane suede around the collar lining to prevent heel slippage and improve stability. The all-new ASICS Lethal Tigrior is quite simply the most sophisticated football boot ever built and provides the platform for a new era of player protection and performance in football. ASICS. Less pain, more glory.